can you lift Thor's hammer in space? Because of its curious, immovable properties, there is perhaps no sci-fi weapon that fascinates nerds more than Thor's, just a sec, than Thor's hammer. Everyone knows that this hammer can make itself impossible to lift in accordance with worthiness, but what everyone asks about are potential exceptions to that rule. Are there any conditions under which you could lift Thor's hammer if you weren't worthy? Could you lift this thing in space? Well, let's jump right into it. Mjolnir's most famous property is that it can somehow make itself impossible to move. When you try to lift something off of the surface of a planet, two forces are acting against you. That object's weight and friction. The weight of an object is the mass of that object multiplied by the gravitational field of whatever planet you happen to find yourself on, and the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force on that object is the force of friction you will find when you try to move it. What happens, though, when you go to a place where both of these no longer apply? In space, far enough from a gravity well, there is no G to give this M any weight. And in interstellar space, there is on average just a single atom of hydrogen per cubic centimeter of space, so there's not really any friction to speak of. Now, I should say that canonically, Mjolnir can indeed be lifted and moved around in space. Both the Hulk and Iron Man have done so, citing weightlessness and zero gravity as the reasons respectively. But weightless is not the same as massless. Where is everyone? Oh yeah. Both of the forces that fight your attempts to lift something off of the surface of a planet both care about mass. Now, I've always made the claim that Mjolnir can help Thor fly and become unliftable because it can effectively change its mass. And it might be able to do that by emitting something like a graviton particle, a particle that's yet unproven and undetected, but scientists think that it might mediate gravity like photons mediate light. And this explanation is now actually canon, thanks to James Kekalios. I will admit that it's not a great explanation. Saying Thor's hammer can make itself more massive is like saying water can make itself wetter. But hey, I'm in space and I can breathe and you can hear me, so let's just chalk all this up to advanced Asgardian tech. What's really important for us is that if Thor's hammer can mediate mass, then the comics might be right. Okay, I'm going, jeez. If the hammer is really altering its mass, there might be a worthiness loophole for an unmovable weapon. In space, there may be no weight or friction, but forces still come in equal and opposite pairs, and momentum is still conserved. So let's say out here I had something like, mm, I don't know, Spider-Man's web shooters. Don't worry, he's not using them right now. Now, if I move my hand to push these shooters in space, they will apply an equal and opposite pushing force on me. As its velocity changes though, because momentum is conserved, my velocity will also change, but in accordance with my mass. So if I push these shooters, they will move out a lot more quickly than I would. Of course, I would move in the opposite direction forever. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, right. Now, if this was a normally massive hammer, I would be able to move it just as easily as I could move Spider-Man's web shooters that he no longer has a use for. But this is not a normal hammer. If the hammer can still resist movement in space, then in response to me trying to change its momentum with a force, a grab or a push or a pull, it's just going to do what it always does, increase its mass. And because of the conservation of momentum, the more it does that, the less and less I'll be able to change its velocity. Dang it! By logical extension, at some point, as the hammer gets more and more massive, I will no longer be moving it. It will be moving me! Ugh. Don't worry though, there is a limit to this. As XKCD creator Random Monroe explains in his fantastic book, What If, reaching towards extremely massive objects is an extremely bad idea. Thor's hammer is almost always linked in conversation to either neutron stars or neutron star dense material. Now, whether that is right or wrong is irrelevant. If Thor's hammer did get that massive in response to movement, you wouldn't want to get anywhere near it. 
With 100 quadrillion kilograms of mass packed into its volume, even if you were dozens of meters away from Thor's hammer in space, your body would start accelerating towards it. You'd go so fast, faster, 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 until you finally impacted it, and your body was crushed and crumpled. It would be a fate worse than being snapped out of existence by Thanos. So, hey, stop it. Cool. But what I love about the absoluteness of physics is that you do not have to go to the extremes because technically there's nothing that Mjolnir can do to prevent you from moving it in space. If you found Thor's hammer floating around in space, sorry, just a second. There we go. If you somehow found Thor's hammer floating around in space, all it would have to do in response to your movement is make itself about a trillion kilograms. Then if you tried to pick it up, it would move a literally imperceptible amount. In response to a normal human's push or pull, the hammer would only move with this mass at a velocity of less than a millimeter per day. That's the speed of continents, and you're on one, and you don't feel it at all. And yet, the hammer is still moving, even though it doesn't really look like it. Uh, force pairs and conserve momentum mean that technically, no matter how massive something gets, as long as it doesn't kill you first, you can still move it some non-zero amount. Oh, I like this thing. If you were to jump right now, the Earth will move in the opposite direction, less than the width of an atom, but it still moves. Or it would move if there weren't another trillion things on the surface of the planet all moving themselves and canceling out your movement and the Earth isn't perfectly rigid. Still, in theory, some of the smallest objects can move some of the heaviest. Thinking about all of this, we can conclude that Thor's hammer cannot be literally unliftable in space, but it can be practically unliftable. If it can scale its mass in resistance to you trying to move it so that it would feel like you're trying to push or pull a planet, you would not be able to wield, let alone move, Thor's hammer in any real sense of the word. Come on, oh, obey me, look at, look at my hair! So, can you lift Thor's hammer in space? Yes, but there's a huge caveat to that. The comics got this both right and wrong. Yes, zero G and weightlessness would allow you to move Thor's hammer, but if it can make itself unliftable to a being like Hulk on the surface of the Earth, then in space it can plausibly make itself so massive that you wouldn't be able to move it or wield it or use it in any real sense of those words. So it's both liftable and not in space. I guess this Asgardian tech just comes from a land where those two concepts are one and the same. Because science, oh. wait, because science, oh yeah! I know that we always overanalyze the physics in comic books, but I think sometimes we gloss over some really cool applications of science. Like if you go back to Avengers number 122, where Iron Man is moving around Thor's hammer in space, the villain in that comic book had uh, trapped all of the Avengers in a house because that house had rockets underneath it and shot up into space so quickly that all of the Avengers were pinned to the floor due to the high acceleration. That's so cool. That's, a, that's, a, that's what I would do if I was evil, but I'm not. Thank you so much for watching, Marcus. If you want more of me, go to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com. Sign up for a free trial and you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else. And you can also get other premium content from Nerdist and Geek and Sundry. Follow me on social media there and suggest ideas for future episodes. And thank you for watching.